In this video, I'm going to derive the Kolmogorov forward equation or equations for a stochastic SIS model. So by SIS, what I mean is a model of an infectious disease where a susceptible individual can be exposed to an infected person and get infected. And that person can then recover. And when they recover, they become susceptible again. In other words, they do not gain immunity. Okay. so. Um, what we are going to assume for starters that we have a constant population and let's suppose that we start off with let's say three individuals out of a total of seven individuals that are infected um, and it's possible that they can spread the, the three that are infected can spread it to one of the other four and so we can increase the number of infected people to four and be only left with three uninfected I don't know if it's obvious, but I'm leaving the uninfected people as empty dots. Let's make that more clear. And then this can go on. You can then further spread the infection by those four infecting one more person. So we end up with five infected and two not infected. And that can continue, but I won't continue in the picture. And this comes in from the other side until you hit a total of seven infected people on the far right or zero infected people on the far left. Now, I haven't said how you go left. A person can recover. Their immune system can get rid of the infection. But we are going to bring those people back into the susceptible state. We're not going to remove them altogether, um, which would be more like an SIR model where there's a susceptible state and infected state and a recovered which is synonymous with immune okay so and this can also happen here and so on all the way down the chain so i am going to instead of assuming that there's seven individuals here let's just pretend that there are capital n individuals total and here we have the um the number of susceptible sorry, the number of infected individuals at time t, so that's going to be a stochastic process, and that in this case is n equal 1. Here x of t is equal to n, and here x of t is equal to n plus 1. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to write down um, uh, evolution equations for the probabilities of being, of, for the stochastic process being in any of these states um, as a function of time. So I have to give some parameter values to these transition rates. Let me call this upper transition, this will occur at some rate beta, which means this is for a single, this is the probability that a single individual who is infected gets a single individual who is susceptible infected during that period. So beta is uh, rate one person infects one other. And gamma will be the rate at which um, a person recovers. So those are going to be um, sort of exponentially distributed phenomena. So in an interval of delta t of time, if there's a susceptible and an infected in each other's presence, then there's a probability beta times delta t that the susceptible will come out of that infected. Okay, so uh, I'm going to define Pn of t to be the probability that x of t, the number of infected people, at time t is equal to n. And here what we're going to do is write down the uh, evolution of that probability. So Pn, we're, we're going to look at what is the probability that there are n infected individuals at t plus delta t. And we're going to be able to construct that from a few different possibilities. One possibility is that the, the, at, the, at, del, at, at, at the beginning of that interval of delta t, in other words, at time t, there were n minus 1 infected people. And during that period, we had a step to the right. In other words, one more person got infected. And that's assuming that x of t was n minus 1. So that's one possibility. And then 
Um, the, uh, a second possibility, and this is sort of excluded, so we add the probabilities, is that there were exactly n infected people previously, and we multiply that by the probability that nobody gets infected in this intervening delta t. So there's no steps, no infection, and no recovery. And we'll break those down into more pieces in the next line, but let's just get the conceptual framework written out. And then there's the probability that there are n plus 1 individuals infected at time t, and we multiply that one by the probability that there's a step to the left, meaning one person recovered. And that's assuming that there were n oops, plus one individuals infected at time t. Okay, so now let's figure out what each of those probabilities are that we don't yet have written up. So the probability of a step to the right, given that we had a certain number of infected people, n minus one of them at the beginning of that interval. So what does it take to make a step to the right? Well, there are n minus one infected people, and they can encounter any one of n minus n minus one susceptible people. And so this is assuming a well-mixed population, of course. Uh, and that means that we can take the product of those two because there's any two pairwise can meet each other and this is how many different pairwise encounters there could be. And for every one of their, those encounters, depending on how long it is, in this case it's of length delta t, there is a probability b time, beta times delta t that one of those will result in an infection event. So we multiply the rate um, beta times delta t to get the probability of one encounter leading to an infection event, and then um, multiply that by the total number of encounters that, were, that are possible. Okay, and then the probability of no step, given that x of t is equal to n, will be... Well, we can't get anybody infected, so it's 1 minus beta times little n times big N minus little n multiplied by delta t. So that's the probability that um, nobody gets infected in that interval. And also that nobody recovers in that interval. And there's n individuals who could recover, so the probability of any one of them recovering in that interval is n is gamma times delta t, and then multiplied by n because of there, there being n of them. And then we have the probability of a step to the left, given that x of t is equal to n plus 1. And that means that somebody recovered so we have gamma times delta t, but then I'll put in between here n plus 1 possible people could actually recover. So the probability of a left step is n times gamma delta t. Okay, so now we have all those pieces. We can assemble them into a single equation, and we get pn of t plus delta t is equal to pn minus 1 of t times a step to the right, which is beta n minus 1, n minus n minus 1, times delta t, and then plus pn of t times 1 minus beta n n minus n times delta t minus gamma times n times delta t plus pn plus 1 times t times gamma n plus 1 delta t. So I should just remind you that um, all of these are estimates in the limit that delta t is small. And so um, 
and the, and the reason for that is because we're, we have to be in the limit where delta t is small enough that the probability of any two events, like somebody recovering and um, somebody getting infected in the same interval delta t, or two people recovering or two people getting infected, uh, the probability of that is negligible compared to the probability of one event. And so we also need the probability of even one event being relatively small. Otherwise, these expressions would be slightly different. So, but in that limit, these expressions are a good approximation. And as we take the limit as delta t goes to zero, which we will eventually, um, they become, well, no longer approximations, but they become uh, uh, good uh, estimates. Okay, so, um, so oh, and another uh, comment here. So these three here, if we had a discrete process, these would form the entries of a transition matrix from one moment in time to the next. So we could have stopped there and just said, <clears throat> we're going to look at day-to-day -day behavior of the infection, and these would be the probabilities from one day to the next. The problem is, again, that these are only good if delta t is small, so we would have to probably take, um, we probably have to take delta t smaller than a day, depending on what this infection is. Like a long, long range, long time range infection, something like AIDS, maybe that's okay. Um, but as long as there's more than a single event per day, um, like in uh, common cold propagating, uh, you would expect this to be uh, a pretty small delta t for that to be accurate. Okay, so let's go back to the process that we're talking about, which we'd like to describe as a continuous time process. So now we have an expression for uh, Pn of t plus delta t. So you'll notice hiding in here is a Pn times 1. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to bring it over to the other side. So I get Pn of t plus delta t minus Pn of t. And then you'll also notice now everything that's left is has a delta t as a factor in it. So I can divide through by that delta t factor, and now I have my pre-derivative fraction, and I can take a limit in a moment. But right now, let me write down the rest of it. So we have pn minus 1 of t times beta times n minus 1, capital N minus little n minus 1, and then add to that no, subtract first. That minus, that 1 is gone, so I'm going to be subtracting Pn of t times beta n times n minus m, and then subtracting again gamma times n, and then adding Pn plus 1 of t times gamma times n plus 1. And so now I take a limit here, and I get that the time derivative of Pn of t is equal to Pn minus 1 times beta n minus 1 n minus n minus 1 minus Pn beta n n minus n minus n minus m. What is m? It should be an n m minus n and minus gamma n plus p n plus 1 times gamma n plus 1. So this is just one equation uh, out of a total of, um, well, going from little n equals 0 up to little uh, n equal capital N. So we have a whole system of capital N plus 1 differential equations represented here. Um, a small problem with these expressions when we get to the edges, uh, for example, when n, oops, when n is equal to 0, uh, there are no infected people. In fact, when n is equal to 1, we already have a problem. When n is equal to 0, a lot of these terms are 0, right? So when n is equal to 1, yeah, we're actually going to, we're probably going to omit that. Let's omit that. So when n is equal to 1, um, this term naturally goes to 0. And these one, this one not. Okay, so yeah, when n equals 1, we just omit the first term. And when n is equal to capital N, oops, 
that means that um, so this is not as obvious this equation should be omitted because that requires that we could possibly have n plus 1 infected people one of whom recovers and so we have to omit it at the other end so this happens really this sort of fits naturally when we put this into a matrix notation so um, so for example uh, we can rewrite the uh, derivative terms on this side as an entire vector prime equal to this matrix a and that a matrix a is uh, multiplied by the vector p again where a is a tridiagonal matrix with lots of zeros and three non-diagonal sorry non-zero diagonals uh, the middle one containing this term here let me do this in some color so this this one here will have this negative term in it and this one here is going to be the pn plus one so that's this term oh and not without the p's uh, oh and there's a pn missing in this expression let me fix that so here I forgot somehow this pn let's put a bracket Oop. put a bracket around that and plus there there should be a pn multiplying both of those uh, so this one will be another pn there and so the third one would be this diagonal here would have this expression in it and let me just clean up this so these ones would have just the negative bn and the negative gamma n and then this one would have just the gamma n plus 1. And so that is our Kolmogorov forward equation, which gives us the probability, the, <clears throat> the solution to this would give us the probability of there being a certain number of individuals infected at time t. So the last thing that I should mention here is that we also need an initial condition. And so um, probably as realistic, realistic as I would imagine I could get here, I'm going to say that the probability of there being one person infected at time zero is equal to one, and the probability of there being k people infected at time zero where k is not equal to one will be zero. In other words, the beginning of the infection, it all starts with one person getting infected. And so this is for k not equal to one. Okay, and that is the Kolmogorov forward equation for a stochastic SIS model.